Good evening to our respected audience. I present in vitro and in vivo studies of the effect of thyroid hormone consciousness field on Alzheimer's disease. I'm Parisa Mafton and representing the Cospointa research team in this world. I have Master of Bioprocess Engineering from University of Technology Malaysia. First, I'll introduce the consciousness field theory and the relevant body of research. Then we take a quick look at Alzheimer's statistic and disease progression. After that, I share the in vitro study on human neuron cell, followed by the in vivo study on the rat model. I end the presentation with the key takeaways and opportunities for future studies and collaborations. As seen in the table in the previous book by Cosma Intel, the effect of T-consciousness fields on the matter, microorganism, cancer cells, plants, and human is recorded and measured. The studies in neuroscience also showed us a glimpse of hope on its effect on neurodegenerative diseases that are worth further investigation. So what are T-consciousness fields? According to Muhammad Ali Tahir's historical concept, T consciousness is one of the three existing elements of the universe apart from matter and energy. Since T consciousness is neither matter nor energy, therefore it's not measurable. However, its existence can only be known by observing and recording its effect on matter and energy. Based on consciousness bond theory, whenever a link is established between cosmic internet and consciousness of parts, such as molecules, plants, or humans, significant changes can be observed in the properties, characteristics, or conditions of that part. To develop a better understanding of T-consciousness fields, we have defined five stages of research, starting from proving the existence of T-consciousness fields to studying the mechanism of its effect. This project is in stage one or phase one, in which we study the effect of one of the T-consciousness fields called paradermony. Dementia is a growing public health concern affecting over 55 million people worldwide. According to Alzheimer's Disease International, this figure will rise to 1.39 million by 2050. The estimated cost of dementia is over 1.3 trillion US dollars. AD is the most common cause of dementia, therefore we are in dire need for the need of new treatment strategies. It takes many years before symptoms of AD emerge from its onset. Impaired recent memory is an initial symptom of AD. As dementia progresses, other cognitive deficits such as language dysfunction and visual spatial difficulty are frequently apparent. These cognitive impairments are usually accompanied by changes in personality and behavior. Pathologically, AD is defined by the extracellular accumulation of beta amyloid peptides and intracellular neurofibrillary tangles of composed of hyperphosphorylated tau protein. This results in disruption of neural communication as tau proteins have a crucial role in maintaining the stability of microtubules in axons. In clinical trials, both of beta amyloid plaque and tau proteins are prime targets for disease modifying treatments. This study aims to investigate the effect of T consciousness fields, a non pharmacological method in treating AD. Since this approach works at the level of cellular and molecular processes, the effect of paradigmatic consciousness fields on human neuron cell line in vitro is investigated. Induced pluripotent stem cells from two late onset AD patients and two healthy control HMAS subjects were donated from Royal Cell Bank. The iPSCs were then differentiated to neural progenitor cells using a neural induction medium for seven days. The NPC then replanted in the neural expansion medium and the medium was changed every other day for seven days. After the differentiation of the neurons, the, the expansion medium is replaced with differentiation medium and used for 35 days. We normally change the culture medium every four days according to our protocol. However, to starve the cells, we didn't change the medium for an additional 96 hours. We confirmed prominent telepathy open 96 hours of starvation. Immunofluorescence microscopy is used to study the telepathy and amyloidopathy as well as the survival and accumulation of microtubule structure of neuron under the aging stress. 
This study is conducted in three groups. Group A is the control group without any treatments. Group B is the sham group that received starvation without FCF. And group C received both starvation and FCF. There were three replications in each group. The experimenter was blinded to the treatment status and two-way analysis of variance is used for data analysis. The FCF treatment request for Group C is registered on the COSMINTEL website for the entire experiment duration, from the time the model was created up to the ends of the related essay. The immunofluorescent intensity of cis-phosphorylated tau protein in three groups is shown in this figure. While there was a profound increase in neurotoxicity phosphorylated tau in the stress of culture neurons, the FCF treatment eliminated P-tau from the cell. Similarly, aging stress induced significant aminodopathy in the stress out culture, and FCF treatment blocked the pathogenic process. Cell assays showed that FCF treatment prominently suppressed neurodegeneration in cultured neuron open aging stress. Also, there was a profound microtubule disruption in the stress out neurons and the FCF treatment held the phenomena confirmed by immunofluorescent staining of the cell. From the result, we can conclude that the treatment of human neuronal cell of Alzheimer's disease by the FCF led to about complete survival of neuron cell model and elimination of amyloidopathy and tau protein. Two in vivo studies are conducted. In one study, we used traumatic brain injury mouse model and measured changes in tau protein content and behavior of mice in elevated plasmids under treatment of the FCF. You can find the details of this study on the Cosmo Intel website. In the other study, the scopolamine model of Alzheimer's disease is used to study the effect of FCF on spatial memory and passive avoidance behavior in male vista rats, which I elaborate on further. Escopolamine can induce cholinergic dysfunction and thus impair an animal's memory. We used the famous Maurice water maze to investigate spatial memory. The rasphers are trained to find a hidden platform in the water and the probe test is carried out 24 hours and one week after training. For the inhibitory avoidance test, the rats are trained that entering the dark room leads to electrical shock. So during the test, which was conducted 24 hours and a week after training, the latency of entering into the dark chamber was determined as a measure of memory and recorded as a step through latency. 18 male Vista rats were used, 10 rats in each group. The animals had adequate access to water and food except during behavioral experiments and were divided into the following group. The control group received only phosphate buffer saline or PBS. Escopolamine group or STP received a dose of 5 mg per kg escopolamine one hour before the test. The treatment group 1 received FCF as well as PBS and treatment group 2 received FCF and SCP at the same time. The experimenter was blinded to the treatment status and analysis variance is used for data analysis. The effect of escopolamine and PBS on animal performance at the probe stage is shown here. There is a significant difference between probe 1 and 2 between the control and escopolamine group. There was no significant difference between the treatment group, FCF and PBS, and control in both probes. However, FCF treatment restored the memory of rats in the escopolamine treated group in the second probe test compared to the control group. This is our result regarding inhibitory avoidance. As shown in figure A, no significant difference was observed in the initial step through latency. Note that the experimental group have not yet received any medication. In figure B, it's clear that animals treated with the escopolamine develop impaired avoidance memory 24 hours after training. There was no significant difference between FCF treatment and the control group. However, the FCF and escopolamine treated group prevented memory impairment and restored the ability to recall. Figure C shows the one-week recall result. Escopolamine-treated group recalls the shock chamber similar to the control group due to paradigmonic consciousness field treatment. Therefore, we can conclude that the treatment of rat AD model with escopolamine resulted in long-term memory disruption. In contrast, treatment with paradigmonic consciousness field improved memory function similar to the untreated control. 
In conclusion, paradigmatic consciousness field has shown significant impact on the recovery of both stress neuron cells and scopolamine model of rats. Therefore, replication of this study by other researchers along with further research is highly recommended as FCF can be a promising alternative medicine helping millions of people suffering from neurodegenerative diseases. Since various forms of tau aggregation accounts for more than 20 neurological disorders including AD, we recommend to study the effect of paradigmatic consciousness field in other neurodegenerative diseases such as Parkinson, and also to test the effect of paradigmatic consciousness field on human subjects. Thanks for listening and a special thanks to the organizer.